Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. Is this real AI or is this just fantasy? With apologies to Freddie Mercury. I'm John Marini, Director of Growth here at Snorkel AI, and I'll be your host for today's event. And now it's my pleasure to introduce you to our presenter, Alexis Zumo. Alexis is the Director of Strategy and Growth here at Snorkel AI. Before joining Snorkel, she was the first entrepreneur in residence in the Department of Defense, and prior to her experience, prior to her federal experience, she had a career in venture capital and investment banking. And now I'd like to hand the presentation over to Alexis. Thank you, John. Hi, everybody. I'm Alexis Zumwalt. I am the Director of Growth and Strategy here at Snorkel AI. You might be wondering what the title of this presentation is all about. Uh, is this real AI or is this just fantasy? If you've ever been a part of a Slack conversation that went just a little too far, you're in good company today because uh, this all started when a group of snorkelers who naturally are huge fans of the rock band Queen and Freddie Mercury's Bohemian Rhapsody decided to make a complete set of parody lyrics which describe our technology. When they found out I was presenting this webinar, they had the great idea to have me sing the entire song to you all with the parody. Now, I am no Freddie Mercury and I informed them that there was no way I was going to be seeing a parody of Bohemian Rhapsody on Snorkel Flow on the internet, which as we all know, lives forever. But we compromised on me changing the title of the talk. I've also included the parody lyrics at the bottom of each slide. So if you're a Queen fan, feel free to hum along with me. So while I am no Freddie Mercury, I am an example of the types of non-technical subject matter experts that are able to use our product Snorkel Flow. You know, again, my name is Alexa Zumwalt. I'm the director of growth and strategy here. Prior to that, I was the entrepreneur in residence at Army Futures Command. And before that, I was in investment banking and VC. So when we say you don't have to be a technical user in order to use our product, I am truth that it is pr it is true. It is so easy that a GS-14, a venture capitalist, and an investment banker can use it. So if anyone's feeling daunted at the end, have no fear. You know, I'm right there with you. So jumping right into the data lake, uh, data has become, and again, you can follow along with the parody lyrics there at the bottom of each slide in the purple there. So if you want to have some fun with it, feel free. Uh, data has become the key enabler for realizing AI's potential. Arguably everything else in the machine learning life cycle is uh, largely a solved problem at this point from our perspective. For hardware, you either buy it from NVIDIA or you rent it from AWS. Software for most ta task types, state-of-the-art model architectures are open source and accessible to everyone. If anything, it's a question of uh, how do you choose the right ones, but that's something that, that can be solved, of course. Talent, you know, in order to uh, build and maintain these machine learning models is in high demand and short supply, but that problem can be solved with money. So, you know, that's, that's plausible. What hasn't changed is the availability of data, specifically access to the large amounts of high quality labeled training data needed to train these machine learning models. Here you can see uh, the traditional manual approaches to labeling data. Right now, your options are primarily to A, have in-house subject matter experts label your data by hand. B, hire armies of vendors uh, for months or even years to label that same data. Or C, to outsource it to complete strangers on the internet. Um, these approaches present several shortcomings. Firstly, they're slow. This could take hundreds or perhaps thousands of people months or years to painstakingly hand label the training data that you would need in order to um, train a machine learning model. There's a very high opportunity cost, especially when using in-house subject matter experts, because you have high value employees spending time labeling data instead of doing other important or impact work. You know, if you think about uh, in healthcare use cases, having doctors label ontologies versus, uh, you know, out there saving lives, that's a very high opportunity. The, the result is this uh, hand-labeled data, which is incredibly hard to adapt. Um, all of that, that hand-labeled data needs to be thrown out if even the smallest thing changes in your mission or how you want to do things. So it's, it can be very costly to just throw all of that away. The la the, these latter two options around vendors and outsourcing for have huge privacy challenges. These options are almost absolute non-starters. If your data is private, sensitive, or classified, this can cause uh, major issues with spillage, you know, as well as some other uh, types of leakage that can happen with those types of data types. So that is where we come in. Uh, instead of spending months or years of time and hundreds of thousands of dollars in labor, 
Our product, Snorkel Flow, enables you to label large amounts of complex data sets programmatically, which can be done in a matter of days, if not hours. In, in the literature, our approach is referred to as weak supervision to drive a pro programmatic labeling process. What that means is Snorkel's, it, with Snorkel's approach, we enable you to take a very small team of subject matter experts and have them express their domain knowledge in a form of business logic that a machine can understand. We call these labeling functions and I'll go a little bit more into that next. So here you see the overall process and then I'll break down. By having subject met in uh, here you have examples of the types of labeling functions that, that we're talking about. By having subject matter act experts create labeling functions instead of labeling labeling data directly, you're able to capture their unique domain knowledge in a way that codifies their understanding of the problem. So rather than having these experts label examples by hand, we have them create a handful of labeling functions. These labeling functions are then used to intelligently automate the task of labeling the data. Uh, labeling functions are essentially way for, ways for subject matter experts to say, this is that how I would think about this problem if I was doing it myself. Something like I, I would look for X. I would compare, I would then compare that to Y. After that, I would look it up in database Z. You're able to essentially write all of that down in, in a way that the machine can then understand. It, it all boils down to some form of business logic describing how they might label the data themselves again in, in a way that the a machine can understand. The cool thing about these labeling functions is that they can conflict with one another. They don't have to be perfectly accurate. These are weak signals. They are a source of weak supervision. Labeling functions are often some form of basic rule or heuristic. So we assume they are going to be imperfect. By themselves, these would not be enough to label the, label the data. Otherwise you wouldn't need machine learning. But what they do provide is some amount of imperfect signal. In a process that looks a little bit like building a recommendation engine, we combine all of these labeling functions together to train a generative label model. That generative model can then be applied to a label a large amount of unlabeled training data. This allows you to programmatically label large amounts of training data in a matter of minutes. So again, what we are doing is codifying subject matter experts domain knowledge into labeling functions that are then used to create a generative label model to create that labeled training set to then drive the process forward. And the, the graph that you're seeing here kind of goes into that a little bit. So while those labeling functions don't cover everything on their own, we can use them to, to create that model that you see there in the middle that can go ahead and label stuff. Uh, and then you see the, the full you know, life cycle there on the other end. At this point in the cycle, so, you know, you've created those, those labeling functions, you've used them to create a generative model that then programmatically labels the rest of your data. You're then able to, to go through this analyze step. So at this point, you're basically off to the races. You use that label training set to train a machine learning model like you would in any other approach. And then we provide a lot of feedback to that non-technical user on ways that they can iteratively improve things in another step through the cycle. This is designed to be a highly iterative process that you go through every 15 or 20 minutes incrementally adding more subject matter expertise through those labeling functions every time that you go. So you can't know how good these labeling functions are until you, you, you use them to label training data. And then you can't know how good that training data is until until you use it to train a machine learning model and evaluate that model. The end result is that you get a production quality machine learning model that is as good, if not significantly better than the traditional approach in a fraction of the time and effort required if you were to label the data by hand. An additional result that you get with this approach is, is that we have a highly iterative process, so it's easily adaptable. Something will always change. And with this approach, you can easily go back through this process quickly to reflect the change all the way back to the data you labeled. So, you know, let's say there's a change in your mission or your use case or how you want to deploy this model. You can go all the way back to those labeling functions, run yourself through this process again, just in a matter of minutes or hours. 
And then all of that data is, is relabeled with your new use case in mind. So meant to be a highly iterative process that can change, you know, along with, with your business. The result is that AI development involve, evolves from a one-shot exercise to a continuous improvement process. You know, we want this loop to be iterative and to grow along with the changes in your business and your machine learning needs. Snorkel Flow is a data-centric AI development platform built for collaboration and governability. We are actually hosting an event on this on April 21st. Uh, it's a free two-hour virtual event called Trustworthy AI, a practical roadmap where we dive into this concept quite a bit deeper. So when we think about the way that we go through these labeling functions, all of this is something that is highly traceable, highly auditable. So whenever you get a question of why did your model produce this result, you can go all the way back through to those labeling functions, understand what were the functions that led to this, this model being trained in this way? Why did it make this decision? All the way down to the individuals that created those labeling functions. So again, you know, having this, this free two hour event on April 21st around a trustworthy AI, a practical roadmap that can be found on our website at uh, snorkel events. And I believe we'll include uh, a link to it in, in these snorkel flow doesn't stand alone. We know that you have additional applications and ML infrastructure and you. Snorkel Flow integrates with all of that infrastructure through our APIs and SDKs. This includes being able to deploy on infrastructures of your choice, whether it's on-premises, a public cloud, private cloud, or even us hosting Snorkel Flow for you. All of that flexibility is included in our platform. You know, you see some examples of logos here, but you know, we are an enterprise platform that is meant to integrate however your, your business needs. Going into the case studies, we have a ton of these case studies on our website. One that I'll just walk you through quickly is in the banking industry. This one in the middle here listed as a top three U.S. bank. Their use case was around analyzing contracts and figuring out what type of contracts they are automatically. This was a, a, a first solution uh, for this customer. They did not have another solution to compare it to. So it was a true zero to one build. It was their first time using Snorkel Flow as well. And in under 24 hours worth of effort, they were able to build an application which had over 99% accuracy. We were very surprised. So, you know, if you go all the way back, you know, first picture I showed thinking about hand labeling and how long that would have taken, you know, this process with a brand new group of users only took uh, 24 hours. So that just sort of goes to uh, show you how much you're able to achieve with Snorkel Flow in the course of a day. You know, for for this this user, it turns out that the use case they were uh, solving for uh, is a very easy problem for machine learning. The hard part was getting the quarter of a million labeled examples needed for the machine learning model to perform at its best. And uh, when you're using that uh, hand labeling approach, that is obviously challenging. But using Snorkel Flow and our programmatic labeling approach, uh, you know, they were able to do this uh, very quickly. So. Just one of uh, many examples, like I said, there, there are more on our website, but I wanted to walk you through one that uh, showed the example of an investment banker can use it, such as myself. And then just sort of wrapping up, you know, Snorkel Flow is all about faster development with adaptable applications that sort of are able to work collaboratively with your workflows, all to drive high accuracy models that are auditable and, you know, provide for, for privacy and, and safety and labeling the data. So this, this approach is, is really thinking about how do we take one of the biggest bottlenecks in machine learning and make that something that is auditable, that's traceable, that's, you know, easy to use, that you don't have to be a technical user to, to really understand. So that is a little bit about Snorkel Flow. With that, I will pause and uh, take some questions. Thanks so much, Alexis. And as I mentioned before, you can ask any questions you have using the Zoom Q&A pane. So feel free to submit those. And um, while we're waiting for some audience questions, uh, a common question we get asked, Alexis, is you know, can you tell me a little bit more about how Snorkel Flow and labeling functions help with trustworthy AI? You touched on it briefly. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for that question, John. So trustworthy AI is, again, all about understanding if our machine learning model produces a result, how do we get to that result? Especially if it is something that is is unfair or equitable, how do we trace back 
why our model made that decision. So with snorkel flow, when you go back to a labeling function versus a hand labeled uh, piece of data, you can understand what that business logic is. So when the subject matter expert is going and encoding that system with, I would look for X in this document. I would then compare it to Y, these types of things that we went through. It's able to track the logic that was used because we, we are codifying their domain expertise in a way that speaks to a machine learning model. It also follows this sort of reasoning pattern that is completely traceable within our system. So the, the nice thing is that you're able to take that in product of a result that a machine learning model produces and take that all the way back to where the human was in the loop, understand what they were thinking at that time, as well as, you know, who was providing that signal to the system. Great. Well, thank you so much for that answer. Not seeing any questions further from the audience. Again, thank you everyone for joining us today. Have a great rest of your day.